Hi there, welcome to the ninth workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows, or the ninth day of my blog of growing this beard. But don't worry, I'm shaving it off in a few days. Um, so you'll probably have noticed that the way I make my rows interesting on this series is really just that you row for a certain amount of time and then you do 30 seconds of something different. And there's no change today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do four and a half minutes at 22 strokes per minute and then 30 seconds fast. Okay, I really want you to get that stroke rate up and your pace up for that 30 seconds then you're gonna go back to that 22 strokes a minute and then you're gonna go back to the 30 seconds blah 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 and you just keep repeating that until your timer says zero okay <laughs> that's how you get through the 30 minutes I'll talk to you about the actual pace that you're gonna do it at during the warm-up though so let's get into that warm-up right so we have to set up our machine first I'll get through this as quick as I can on a concept two that means setting your drag factor to where you want it to be if you don't know about drag factor just set it somewhere between four and five okay too low on a concept two isn't a problem too high is that's where it starts to get a bit grab which is where I uh, what I want to say about those of you that don't use a concept two. If you just have a resistance setting, set it to a weight where you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to like grab and pull at it in order to get the machine to move. Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up or don't have to look down, both of which ruin your posture. And finally, if you can change the height of your foot plates, then please set it to a point where you can come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If you're set too high, it can get a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too too low you can go scooting past and it kind of just changes the angles and you can have a little bit of a power leak and if nothing else it's going to be uncomfortable in your little toes do you? and we want to make sure and have nice comfortable tootsies I don't know why I've suddenly gone very Scottish, but let's start now. I'll, I'll, I'll sound like Mrs. Doubtfire now. Uh, so yeah, like we're going to do this warm-up. We're going to do run about 20 strokes a minute, uh, and I want you just to start with enough of a push of your feet as though you were standing up from a squat, maybe holding a cat. <laughs> or, or some shopping or something okay so a wee bit of power but not loads and you're going to work on pushing with your feet and your hands connecting to the machine all right so here we go then in three two one let's warm up yeah let's warm up so uh, i had a really nice sausage pasta tonight i think this is why i've gone a little bit hyper oh it was tasty so um what i want you to think about is pushing with your feet at the same time your handle connects to whatever makes your machine go, go, okay? So in my case, that means the flywheel of my Concept 2. So I push my feet at exactly the same time the handle connects. And to help that, I've got straight arms and a forwards tilt, and that just helps with that angle to make sure that as I push with my feet, the hands connect. If I come in leaning back, it's quite tough to do. Ooh to get it right, whereas in that forward lean, I've got the angles right. I just rolled over something, I think, because my seat's now making very strange noises after that example. Right, so if you've got your timing sorted, I want you to just push a little harder with your feet, but keep the stroke rate. So you should be going a few seconds faster if you have a 2k training pace, that means right about 2k plus 18. From an effort point of view, about 5 or 6 out of 10, or as though you were walking up 10 flights of stairs. So heart rate is up, breathing rate is up, but it doesn't feel like you can't continue. This is a warm-up after all. And then, for the 22 strokes a minute section on today's row, I want you to go about three seconds faster than you are rowing right now, okay? And then obviously the 30 second sprint is you just go as fast as you can. Right, two more strokes, and we're gonna put one foot on the ground. So take it out the straps, put it on the ground, continue to row. And don't worry, your pace is gonna drop quite a lot doing this. Don't try and chase the pace that you were just rowing at. Just concentrate on that timing between the push of your foot and the handle connecting at the same time and then your body angle. Let's swap feet. It's easier to get into that body angle, that lean to like a one o'clock position to the front of the machine because you've only got one leg strapped in. You don't have the other one suddenly then creating a 
like a spring as you kind of come forward. So it should be easier to hit that angle, I hope. Right, both feet in. I'm gonna tighten my straps this time. Legs straight and roll with your back and arms. So that means you swing with your back first and as you connect the handle to the machine, you then pull with your arms, okay? So you're not pulling first, you're swinging your back. And then when you're done, handle away and then rock forwards. Okay, so rock, pull, push, rock. Rock, pull, push, rock, okay? Now let's roll to the front of the machine with forwards, tilt and straight arms and just push lightly out from the front. This is your last chance really to isolate and work on that connection timing of your foot press or your leg drive and the hands connecting to the machine. And it also helps you to get used to holding that forwards tilt and straight arms as you drive. You hold it, okay? There we go. So that is our four minute warm up done for today. The main session is about to start. And as I've been doing this whole series, I'm going to wind back to the video that I recorded last year. Uh, so you'll see me doing it with less beard uh, last year. And then I will join you at the end for a cool down. OK, so enjoy your half hour row. I'll keep you right um, with when to start and stop. Hopefully I won't be telling you any little store stories today and completely forget to do the sprint. But if I do, then my apologies. That was quite embarrassing. And yes, it is one, wasn't it? Anyway, right, so four and a half minutes and 22 strokes a minute. 22 strokes a minute is a little bit awkward, but hopefully together we'll, we'll get in time well, after a few strokes. So just follow me on the video or listen to me on the podcast and you should hear the whoosh of my flywheel on the podcast to follow along to that. All right. Okay, then let's get into this in three, two, one. Let's go. So, 2K plus 16 pace at this rate, like I say, it's higher than what a, um, a bottom tier row would be. I tend to, once I get past the 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18, you do start to kind of get towards the upper end of a bottom tier, if nothing else. It's just that little bit more of a push that you need from your legs in order to get the pace up to 2K plus 16. And the stroke rate does feel that little bit faster. I usually say that 24 strokes a minute is when things start to feel a lot more fluid and that you're not needing to slow down any phase of the stroke, but actually 22 feels as though you have to keep everything flowing nice and smooth and a little bit faster. Don't worry on these things, by the way. If you are like 23 for a while or 21 for a while, don't stress too much about it. It can be really easy to chase numbers all the time and let them be the kind of what you base your motivation and success on but the precision of it but as long as you're not like three or four seconds off or three or four strokes per minute off constantly then don't worry about it Unless you're trying to do this thing, they call it OCD rowing, which is about getting a perfect screen of 
intervals that have exactly the same stroke rate and pace and distance that can drive some people mad if you row a 30 minute row set to five minute splits and try and make them all identical you can go years without it happening <laughs> right so we've got just over a minute to go until our first sprint but I do want you to get the stroke rate up there and your pace it's important that you see a kind of spike in pace rate and probably heart rate too if you come back and analyze this row because as much as I'm saying don't be a slave to the numbers the numbers are still really useful to look at after a row to see how you got on right so we're going in three two one here we go really take things up so I'm kind of running about my 2k stroke rate and just slower than pace three two one ease it back down now if you did the Halloween row along with me when I was dressed as Wolverine you'll have also already done very similar to today's row can't remember what the was it 27 seconds or something the sprint I had on that one can't remember why or is it 21 because it was 31 minutes and 10 seconds in total and then to make the full 31 10 21 date I then had 21 seconds of sprinting right, hopefully you are back on rate and pace ideally you want to get back to your rate and pace as quickly as possible after these sprint sections but it's easy to get distracted <laughs> which I just did or just as we go through this row and the edge gets knocked off you it can just take 30 seconds or so to lock you back into the right rate and pace and don't worry I'm not forgotten about technique I just wanted to make sure we get through two of these chunks of 22s and sprints so that we've all experience what we're meant to be doing 
and then I'll start talking technique. Hopefully your energy levels are okay today. <coughs> this is day nine. It's day nine, isn't it? Yeah. For me, for doing these in a row, which isn't too bad, but I think I'll often do like an hour's worth of rowing in a day, so because it's only half hour sessions as we approach a third of the way through this I'm not feeling worn out yet <laughs> the good news is I don't have a bike race tonight which I think was my undoing on session two, or certainly for session three. Okay, so in 20 seconds time, we'll get a bit sprinty again. Right. So, in two, one, let's go sprinting. Get that stroke rate up. Push harder. More force from your legs. More force from your legs, plus a higher stroke rate should result in a lot more speed. One more. Back down. Whew. I'm gonna try and get back in to that 2K plus 16 pace again. Now, if possible, try not to do anything weird with your technique as you go through this transition out of the sprints and into the slower section again. You want to stay powerful You don't want to kind of flop in through the stroke because you just put in that extra exertion. Just remember, nearly everything you're doing power-wise, the attenuation comes from how hard you push with your legs. A harder push means a faster drive speed and more power into the machine. And if you match that faster drive speed with a comparatively faster return as well that's how your stroke rate goes up and so coming back out of the sprint sections if you just push slightly softer with your legs, that will create a slower drive speed. And if you 
slow the recovery too, then hopefully that is how you get your stroke rate down to 22 strokes a minute and the pace down to 2k plus 16. Now, hopefully you've clocked on to the fact that I'm saying it's all about legs. It's not about pulling harder or softer. If you have good technique, what you should find is that it's just about uh, the force that goes through your arms as you push harder or softer. That tension against the handle is higher when you push hard with the legs at higher rates when you're trying to go fast. It should feel easier as you drop down the stroke rates to slow down. Okay, 10 seconds to go. Two more. One more. Let's go sprinting. See how the drive speed increases. So it's faster than it was before and my recovery is faster than it was before. Okay, three, two, one, back down to 22. Slower rate, softer, push with your legs. And when it comes to that drive speed and recovery relation, if you really, at these lower rates, want to think about your drive speed being twice as fast as your recovery or your recovery is twice as slow as the leg drive. So it goes one, two, three, one, two, three. Although <laughs> doing that, I instinctively slowed down to 20 strokes a minute. I'm like Pavlov's dog. Just, yeah, anyway. All I'm saying is that your drive phase should be twice as fast as recovery. And that should make sense. If you want to spend twice as long recovering as you do putting an exertion and then you just have to make sure that your recovery uses as few muscles as possible to allow it to be a recovery after all we're not just recovering to the front of the next stroke. We are trying to let our bodies recover after the drive phase. So it's like effort, recover, effort, recover. And that's why I talk about 
the importance of rhythm and technique when rowing because that helps you through the different phases of the stroke to have that flow that lets you recover and one of the most important things about it is that as you drive you get your legs down okay down at the back of the stroke you don't tug your feet against the foot straps to stop yourself so legs drive and they're down even think about pointing your toes to the front of the machine as a way to stop you flicking against the foot straps and then when you get your hands away from you that starts your recovery puts your back into that forward tilt and then all you have to do is bend your knees and you'll slide effortlessly towards the front of the machine all right you ready for this next one in two one let's go sprinting that's today's hashtag right there let's go sprinting get the rate up handle comes into your chest and then straight back out in the same rhythm in out in out in out two more one more there we go we are under 10 minutes to go that's good news isn't it just got two more of these chunks if you want to call it that to go and it should as we hit this point it should have hit that mid intensity for you and properly reveal itself that this is the intensity you're working at it's not easy like a bottom to your row well to be fair they're not easy they're just the bottom intensity when rowing easy is sitting on your couch watching reruns of Quantum Leap as <laughs> a reason that I bring up Quantum Leap today because just as I was about to come out there was a news announcement that sadly Dean Stockwell has passed away he played Al in case you're like who? one of he enjoyed his time over the past 30 years or so with people tapping their phones in front of him and asking if it was Ziggy <clears throat> anyway what was I yeah so easy is sitting on the couch bottom tier rowing is when you are putting in effort and the heart rate starts to climb but then mid like today is when you have to put in that extra little bit of oomph to hold rate and pace 
you know you can complete, but it's just you have to push a little bit in order to complete. And then top maximum tier rowing is proper eye bulging exhaustion level which these 30 second sprints if you were to hold them at that sprint pace for much longer than say three minutes they would then become top tier sessions so remember your power and pace for the sprint that's coming up in 40 seconds comes from that push from the legs keep that forward lean of your back and straight arms as you push the machine away from you that helps to get the power into the machine okay you ready just a few more strokes two more one more let's go sprinting get the rate up handle away from you helps get the stroke rate up and then you push with the legs in that forward lean straight arms almost done three two one back to 22s for the last time try and really focus on getting into that pace as quickly as possible you're not meant to slow down so much that you end up taking a rest it's just about keeping the intensity up there in order to keep this at that mid-tier intensity now if you find or found fatigue has started to set in then it's time to just do a sit rep on your technique so you slide forwards to your shins are vertical knees are as wide as your armpits okay it's the best way to describe it not together not outside your elbows but they would be in your armpits if they were low enough but you have a good posture up in your sit bones powerful braced core and lumbar area and that keeps your armpits away from your knees you are tilting in to a one o'clock lean hinged over your hips with arms straight chin neutral as you look straight ahead at the monitor you're not looking up you're not looking down and then you push your feet into the machine to push it away from you holding 
those arms straight and your forward lean. If you sense that you're grabbing with your arms, then as you come forwards, a slight outwards rotation of your elbows may be enough to keep them straight as you drive with the legs. And then keep that leg drive going in the forward lean, arm straight. And once your legs are about halfway, that's when you finally swing over your back from that forward lean to the backward lean and then pull in the handle to come to a finish. So you're not pulling until the end. So it's straight pull, straight pull, straight pull and then let your arms bounce away from you. So they get nice and straight, your back rocks forwards, then you bend your knees to return. Okay, two strokes. One more, last sprint, come on. Can you see the best numbers so far? I already have. Can you go faster? More of a push. Really explode out the front. Push. Almost there. Three. Two. Last one. And we're done. Thank you very much. Stephanie. Oh. oh. I told you those 30 second chunks would make that an interesting row. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. It certainly was a good old workout from me. Right, so we might as well get ourselves into a two minute cool down. I'm flanneling just a little bit here to give you a chance to have a drink and just to kind of mop up any sweat that may have just gushed onto the floor. <laughs> what an awful way to put it. Dripped, fallen, gl um, glanced to the floor. Uh, right, it's funny how the last time going into the warm-up I was being Scottish and now I'm being terribly English with glancing the floor. Right then, let's start our cool down. Okay, here we go then. In three, two, one, let's go. Now remember, this is a cool down. Sorry that I didn't say properly pace-wise, but do this round about what you're doing your warm-up at, okay? That kind of five out of ten walking up a flight of stairs kind of intensity. And then as we go through this cool down, you can ease off the power. Just less of a push with the legs. Try and hold the same stroke rate. I mean, it's quite a good thing to do sometimes is actually just row at 20 strokes a minute and just start off quite slow and then gradually keeping at 20 strokes per minute gradually increase your pace and just see how the power from your legs can really affect your pace and remember there's two real ways to get pace when rowing power from the legs and stroke rate yes how much you pull to a finish is going to make some difference but nowhere near as much as how much you push with your legs or your stroke rate right where are we so make sure and ease off that power as you come in to the end of this two minutes. Make sure that you're kind of settling in to a lower intensity, ready to do some stretching. 
Right, here we go. Now, of course, don't worry if you don't have time to do any stretching. I'm not going to shout at you, but I do suggest that you at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings at one point. Not in the shower. I don't want you to slip and fall over, please. Uh, but yeah, if you can stretch your quads and your hamstrings, that'd be much better for you. So, Or you can join Stretchy John up in the top corner. He will take you through some guided stretching, or I will take you through some stretching on the machine if you don't have space. So put your feet back in the straps, make sure they're loose so you can flick your toes against them. Legs nice and straight, hands in the air, and fold your body down towards your legs, okay? And that folding action should have put a really nice stretch down here in your hamstrings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just, sorry, I just, just went through my head how I'm just saying the same thing and these stretching things all the time. But it's important. If you don't have that stretch in the hamstrings, you've either not got that fold right, you're either not coming down too, coming down far enough, uh, you don't hold on to your ankles and pull yourself down, though, that's a bad idea. Um, or you might have a bend in your leg and your knees, so just work with your own angles so you know exactly how your body responds to stretching. So, next up, let's do glutes. So one leg up on the rail of the rowing machine, other foot comes over so that your heel is tucked into the crook of your knee. Bring your other knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your head, your knee and your foot. Hold that knee in place with one arm and then turn your body round, okay? Hold on to the back of the machine and kind of rotate a little bit more. Okay, so I'm trying to, ideally I'd have my chest pointing, would that be perpendicular to my body? Is that right? Perpendicular? Answers in the postcard. Um, yeah, so that my chest would be kind of facing that way, but uh, I don't think my spine rotates that way <laughs> or that much. The amount of back problems I've had this year from my SI joint going click. Don't really want to push things, but yeah. This is kind of similar-ish to that, or from a spine point of view, to the supine twist that you can do lying on the floor. The rest of your body's not the same, obviously, because you're stretching your glutes, but... Right, let's change legs. Oh, my laces are untied. I hope I don't trip. Oh, yeah. Oh, Christ, sorry. I'm back with the, the old man noises again. Uh, this is my second workout of today. Uh, my first one over lunch was I went for an hour-long um, run on a treadmill. Just loaded up Zwift Run and went at a very slow pace, on like nine, nine and a half kilometers an hour, and ran for an hour. And I've not run for ages for like a, a long distance. So my glutes are a wee bit tender today. Aye. Right then, let's get on to our quads. <laughs> I'm gonna get chased out of my own country. So do our quads next. Put one finger on the monitor, or we'll pick a finger and put it on the monitor. Flick, oh crikey, there you go, that'd be the run. Flick your foot up against oh, your backside so that your heel touches your backside and then put enough of a pull here, this is important, enough of a pull you can feel the stretch in your quads, but not so much of a pull that you're gonna be ripping your, uh, your leg out of its socket or whatever. What would happen? We were snapping your quad, I guess would be all that would happen, but you get what I mean. Enough of, en enough of a pull that you can get that stretch into your quads. And remember, it's your quad that you're stretching here, not your hip flexor, not your knee, not your um, shin muscles, because if you, I'll just change legs, if you hold down at the toes, instead of um, like up on your upper foot, if you're down at your toes, you can, t you can end up stretching your tendons and your ligaments and stuff, and you can just cause yourself a modicum of discomfort. I believe would be the best, politest way to say it. Um, yeah, and you don't want to do that. I mean, I said before, half the reason, well, yeah, half of the reason I bleat on about technique all the time is to make sure that you don't get injured when you're rowing. So I don't want you to get injured when you're stretching at the end either. So let's do uh, hip flexors next. We weren't stretching them before, but we can now. So I'm gonna do this one with a knee on the ground. So one knee on the ground, my foot behind is up on its toes. My other foot is in front on the floor normally, and my knee is above it. Hopefully that's a good enough uh, description for you podcast folk. And then for the hip that is, has the knee on the ground, I'm just gonna push it forwards. Whoop. And I'm gonna, you do, obviously it wasn't my hip making that noise. And then you're gonna have a good posture as you do it. And that should then give you a really, sorry, I just yawned halfway through that. Should get a really nice stretch right up in that hip flexor. In fact, I can feel it. If I put my hand in my pocket. Any change in here? No. Um, I can feel, uh, just the muscle is just like really nicely stretching. I can feel the kind of the muscle is 
I was going to say split, but that sounds awful. But I can kind of feel the musculature anyway. Hey, I can feel my musculature. Look at me. Aren't I amazing? Look at my rippling hip flexors. <laughs> okay, let's change legs. Oh, I'm sorry, there must have been something in tonight's sausage pasta. Of course, sausage pasta is my danger dish. It was uh, cooking so sausage, sausage pasta back in uh, 2018. <laughs> this is how, this is what, four years ago. It's when I was uh, about to chop up the sausages to make sausage pasta. That was when I had my knife accident. When I was sharpening the knife before doing it and I it basically it fell out of the sharpener and it went right into my knuckle and kind of like that. And cut right through the um, tendon, right into my knuckle capsule and left me like that which is quite exciting for like, and then I had to get it all sewn together and then I was in the cast for, oh, what was me, for weeks. And I've never really been the same since. I've always been slightly bonkers. Right, uh, what are we, we going to do next? Let's do uh, forearms next. So hands together in front of your face. Hi, can you see me? Yeah, can you see me? And then push them together, bring them down in front of your body, carry on pushing them together, and you'll get a nice stretch through your fingers. Oh, I've got a dirty finger. And also your forearms, okay? Uh, yeah. So yeah, so I had a knife accident and then it just, because uh, I was then off for eight weeks, couldn't really do anything. Um, that was effectively the end of my um, racing point when my kind of early 40s, I was what, 42 when that happened, I think. Um, yeah, and then I just never really recovered, never got that kind of top end, that real kind of the cream fitness that I had never really came back. And I just think, yeah, am I blaming that? I suppose I am. Yeah, but you know what? If that hadn't happened, roll on wouldn't have happened. So it was you, um, the rehab to get back into rowing after cutting my finger is why I set up roll along. So there you go. Hand out straight in front of you. So you're. So if I go to the other hand next, I always start on the left hand. I'm going to start my right hand. So as though you're shaking someone's hand, hello. And then bring it across your body and then hold it in place by kind of looping your other arm over it. Okay? You see what, what I mean? Obviously, podcast people can't, but. Yeah. When life gives you lemons, make a YouTube channel. <laughs> Actually, that's not that bad. It went bad. Uh, the amount of YouTube channels that are out there that are probably similar. It's like someone's been... Like even I was watching a video today by uh, Lewin Hines from the uh, Broken, Broken Oars podcast. I was wa watching it because he was reviewing indoor rowing channels. So obviously from the narcissistic point of view, I fast forwarded straight to his review of me. But even at the start of that, Let's swap arms. At the start of his video, um, he was kind of saying, oh, I was meant to be racing in a, in a four today. I think it was a four. And there was a storm, so he couldn't. So he ended up just at home making a, a video reviewing um, indoor rowing uh, YouTube channels instead. So he had lemons and he made a video. So he did basically just what I said, where uh, when life gives you lemons, make a YouTube video. Uh, it's a good video. You should check it out. So Broken Oars podcast um, is the name of the channel and the podcast. This podcast is really good. Um, yeah, and he reviews uh, Training Tall, Dark Horse, um, Cameron Buchan, uh, Essency. I can't remember if there's someone else. And then me at the very end. He left the best to left. <laughs> right, let's do our biceps. This, this stretching session is going on a wee bit too much today, isn't it? Uh, biceps last, oh, sorry, second last. So hands behind you as though you're a ski jumper. Whee! And then rotate those thumbs outwards. I think it was actually, I, I think what it is, I've got delusions of adequacy. Adequacy when it comes to my uh, presenting style, because uh, he kept on saying in that video how I was entertaining. <laughs> so I've now got delusions of adequacy that I'm entertaining. <sighs> Again, answers on the postcard, if you want me just to get back to just doing the stretching and, and not. But then it has occurred to me that recently, like in most of the videos that I've made recently, um, not counting these 30 minute ones, but the ones before, I've kind of been a little bit too on the whole, hey, motivation and, and technique and stuff. I've not really been having my rants. Uh, triceps next, so, so loop your hand up in the air, oh, but then bring it down your back. So it touches your spine, and then use your other hand to just help that tricep up, okay? And this gives you a nice little stretch in your tricep, and that also opens up your lats a little bit as well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if you look back at some of my videos, even from like 2020, that was probably a lockdown madness, to be fair. But yeah, I'd kind of talk about, I'd talk about rowing and technique and whatever at first, but then I go into these mad rants about um, playing the drums and how much I love my wife and all that kind of stuff. Um, none of that's changed. I still play the drums and I still love my wife, don't worry. <laughs> so I swap arms. But I don't know. I think I just seem to have, uh, kind of start to just talk more about rowing and trying to improve your, your rowing, maybe in a kind of, I don't know, sometimes I... I 
I'm trying to find the missing link. What do I need to do? What do I need to talk about? What, what videos or sessions do I need to make to try and grow the channel? So sometimes I just try something different. So that's why sometimes I'll just talk about rowing instead of dead mouse. I mean, why would I? Anyway, that's me done with stretching uh, for podcast folks. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get back on track now. So I do hope you enjoyed today's row and I hope uh, you enjoy the journey through whatever's going on in my head for this uh, stretching session. So that's day nine of the 30 uh, days of 30 minute rows. Do not worry if you've just appeared on day nine and gone, oh man, I'm humming them on day nine. It really doesn't matter. You can pick up from here. You can go back to row one if you want. You can skip every third, like a little, doo -doo 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 -doo, a little sheep gambling through a field, bouncing through the rows, just skipping some bit at a time. It's entirely up to you. They're just, every single one of my rows is just here as a standalone workout for you to do. And it just so happens that every now and then I group them up into a plan, like a 2K plan or the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Or uh, when we come up to the 1st of December, I'm going to do the 12 rows of Christmas again. Um, because why wouldn't I? But this time I'm just going to be very lazy and just run the 12 rows of Christmas that I made last year. Because why would I? They, I mean, they were genius. No, they were. But they were good rows. So anyway, right, I'm going to go because for, obviously I need to lie down. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I could do it with a nice cup of chamomile tea and a lie down and just to kind of try and calm down from whatever hyper state I'm in. It's probably because I've done two workouts today. There's got so many endorphins going through my body. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for putting up with me. You have no idea how much it means to me that you hang around uh, and watch these videos. Everyone that returns back to me, all these familiar names like Scott and um, Jeff and Frank and Colin and all the people that keep on commenting on the videos. Apologies to every single one of you that I've just missed out. CDDB, BDD, CBDBD, Charlene McKinnon, everyone, everyone, everyone. Sharita, who's bounce back onto the machine again and oh, I'm just saying names now because I don't want to miss anyone else and then obviously Grace um, who uh, yeah yeah I'm gonna stop people saying people's names so that, like an Oscars speech I know I'm gonna end up getting all these emails saying you didn't say my name so I'm very sorry Mike <laughs> anyway uh, thank you yeah thanks for putting up with me it really doesn't mean much so I uh, mean a lot so I will see you either in row 10 or in one of my little uh, standalone app review videos or something or technique review videos or on one of my other rows but hopefully I will at least see you again or you'll see me again okay leave a comment tell me to shut up whatever and I will see you in another video okay until then take care be well bye bye